living in a world where we're not the world's military and economic superpower, but yet that's not a given. So every time I see my colleagues, and I know Dean feels the same way, attacking each other personally, I've actually gone up to them on the floor and told them, if you're conducting yourself in a way that's making Vladimir Putin happy or Xi Jinping mm -hmm. happy, you ought to be second guessing your decisions. Mm. It's so, so true. And, you know, and considering the age of our democracy and, and Brian's so right, you know, we're kind of a teenager amongst adults when you look mm -hmm. at world history. And sadly, we are acting like it well too often, especially <laughs> those, those moms listening or who are mothers of teenagers know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We've got to rectify that and recognize our relative youth in a world with a lot of uh, longer history. But I love what you said. If you are conducting yourself in a way that makes Vladimir Putin happy, rethink. Yeah. Rethink your choices. And of course, one of his big, you would, you would know, having served in the region, Brian, that one of his primary joys in life is sowing division. Yep. <laughs> and that and is what, it. and he's good at it. Yep. And if he can get Germany to bow out of NATO agreements, et cetera, then that's great. You know, like he enjoys that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. If you are conducting yourself in a way that Putin likes, rethink your choices. Rethink it, rethink it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, so, yes. that's so, so true. We, we've got to recognize that we don't want to be pawns. And, you know, if you look at China's intentions, Russia's, North Korea's, Iran, as Brian said, they know they can't beat us with bullets, mm -hmm. uh, but they can beat us with division. And they're, not only have they been recently successful, that will breed upon itself and they will try harder and it's up to us. Mm -hmm. It's not up to them. It's up to us. Mm -hmm. And we all have a responsibility here that's far more important than any policy or political victory, because if we don't preserve this, uh, there isn't nothing. And one of the things I think people maybe don't realize or have glossed over is that the tools with which people who would seek to harm us, as you mentioned, they're not tanks. They are not planes dropping weapons at this juncture. In large part, they're digital tools. Yeah. They are election interference. They are misinformation campaigns. They are cyber attacks. It's not bombs falling from the sky. It's more insidious and more difficult to see in many cases. That's so true. You know, mm -hmm. one of the problems is that they plant these seeds of division. You know, they're sitting in, in Moscow or in, in Beijing or uh, Tehran, and they plant seeds of division on Facebook. And unfortunately, too many of us are sitting on computers or in front of phones or television screens, and we accept what we see as the gospel. And instead of walking across the street to the neighbor's house and having a cup of coffee and talking about it, talking it out, just as Brian said, uh, we both practice that in Congress. You know, if we're disappointed in somebody, my first step is always to talk to them face to face, not just to go on Twitter. There was a time, Brian, you remember when my party's congressional campaign committee ran an ad in Pennsylvania against Brian, calling him all kinds of mean-spirited, obnoxious things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I approached the person who was responsible for it, you know, on my side of the aisle to say, that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we're going to be people of truth and a party, hopefully of truth, you know, we got to practice what we preach. And each one of us has those experiences in the course of our lifetimes and probably in the course of our a daily experience. And if we just take a step in that direction, talking to people uh, face to face, instead of over Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, we'd be a better country. And that's something we've got to work on uh, collectively. And I, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you doing that, Dean. And it's, it's uh, exhibit A of the character you have. Mm. Well, you're, you're, you're worthy of it. Mm. Very few people's minds are changed after reading a mean tweet. <laughs> no, nobody is like, yeah. wow, I have really had an epiphany. I'm a better person. I've changed my position after engaging in a fight on social media. That is not right. how change occurs in society. It does the opposite. It hardens right. hearts. 